Yesterday, during this uh, talk on the holographic universe, we had the idea that any volume, any information contained in a particular volume is defined by the sheet around it, by, by a 2D um, surface on which everything is encoded and that is happening in there. And um, one of the problems that Hera Tov pointed out yesterday was that uh, the problem of the dynamics is not solved, so this is not addressed here. And what we are doing today is essentially go one step further and address that as well, and even ignore um, um, the, the, the 2D structure of information and, and take into account the possibility that it's actually a one-dimensional program, a simple bit string that is running, that is explaining in a compact form everything that you find on these 2D bubbles, all the information that is, um, that is created as the, in, as the universe is evolving is actually contained, and this is a hypothesis, but it's not totally implausible, in a very short program that is running the entire evolution of this, of this universe. Now, uh, this leads to the question, what is this information we are talking about? What is information? And there are different definitions of information. The one that I think is the only one that, that makes deep sense is the one of Kolmogorov, who, who defined the information of any object, of any data, as the length of the shortest program that computes it. So you have a big fractal image, for example, and it has all kinds of little details, but the important thing is that you can compute this huge image uh, by a very short program, a short piece of code, just three lines of code, which give you all this complexity, which means that the information content of this complex looking info, um, image is actually very, very small. Now, now is, that, is that similar to the way that DNA isn't equal to a human being? or a living creature, but well, it is a set of instructions that on some level can produce, can specify mm. a, a living creature if you run the program? It's more fundamental than that because DNA is um, encoding, for example, your brain, which has many more synapses than you have material in the DNA to encode it, which means that essentially what the DNA is encoding is a learning algorithm for your brain that makes over time, within 20 years of experience, your brain um, acquire information from the environment, which is useful for its survival and its success in the environment. Here we are talking about a much more radical thing, which says all of this, including what's happening in your brain, in his brain, in your brains, if you're still <laughs> there. And you're doing pretty well. I think you're doing pretty well. That all of this is just a consequence of maybe a very short program that also generates all this apparently random stuff, like the beta decay that Seth uh, uh, mentioned. Possibly, all this randomness is actually not random, it's pseudo-random, and there's a very short program that computes it. We don't know, but there's no evidence against it, and as long as we don't have evidence against that, the scientific way is to keep looking and see whether you can find that little well, program.